all know that jealousy is a relationship killer. What is it? Why do we feel it? And how do we deal with it? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Jealousy can be normal and natural, but relationship jealousy and sexual jealousy may be more of a cultural norm than an actual biological or psychological norm. In some cultures, in some tribes, in the Amazon for example, there are several partners and they really don't have sexual or relationship jealousy. Even in our culture, people who are in polyamorous relationships work not to have that much jealousy. Harwick licensed marriage and family therapist and the video today is on how to survive the breakup after that first 30 days. This is your breakup boot camp. So breakups suck. It's true. They're never fun for anybody. Whether you're the one getting dumped or you're the one doing the dumping, it's always a change of life. It's always some type of transition and it doesn't feel good. It's going to bring up feelings of anger, sadness, that's normal. But if we never got over a breakup, if it always stayed equally painful, we'd be in a deep, dark sadness hole forever. That's just not how we are as people. Our minds and our bodies are made to find an equilibrium, bounce back, and find some type of normalcy and move forward. This guide is gonna help you get through that first 30 days, which are the worst 30 days. The first four weeks of any new change are gonna be difficult. That's like a book right there. Rock and roll really helped me through my darkest times. And that's what this week, you might want to speak to this woman, Dr. Amy <laughs> Harwick, who she, she's a uh, licensed marriage and therapy family therapist, but she's really a sex therapist, not going to lie. So yep. how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me today. So take us um, to understand what does it mean to be a sex therapist? So that's an interesting concept and question just because a lot of people don't know what it means. So I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And after that, I went to school and got an additional degree in sexuality. Most people don't know that in a program for therapists, a master's program, or even a PhD or PsyD program, there's usually like one unit of sexuality education and all the other classes are three units. So it's a third of anything else you're getting educated on. Um, and in the class I took pretty much, they were like, write a paper on whatever you want about sexuality. Right. And then the teacher wrote, um, the professor wrote, you should really teach this class. And I'm like, right. I will. So right. I'm actually in talks to do exactly that soon. Um, so, so interesting. So yeah. it's so minor, like the amount of education. So if you go to a therapist and they haven't sought out additional education or experience in that topic, right. they really don't know so, much about sex. So therapist tonight, a well-known Hollywood therapist is being remembered. And one of her ex-boyfriends is being charged with murder. According According to police, early Saturday morning, emergency crews responded to reports of a woman screaming. They found 38-year-old Amy Harwick unresponsive beneath a third-story balcony. The police investigation revealed possible evidence of a struggle, as well as forced entry, and significant injuries consistent with a fall. Harwick later died at the hospital. According to police, Harwick had recently expressed fear about him and filed a restraining order, which had expired. Police say the two saw each other just two weeks ago. Harwick, whose death is still being investigated, dedicated much of her life's work to counseling victims of abuse. The CDC says nearly half of all women homicide victims are killed by current or former partner. Restraining order laws vary from state to state. Some research does suggest that threats of violence and actual incidents of physical violence go down after a victim obtains a restraining order. Game show host Drew Carey is speaking out over the gruesome murder of his ex-fiance, sex therapist Dr. Amy Harwick. The Price is Right host called Dr. Harwick a positive force in the world, a tireless and unapologetic champion for women and passionate about her work as a therapist. Carrie and the sex therapist got engaged in 2018 before they amicably split. Cops say Dr. Harwick's former boyfriend, Gareth Hershaus, threw her from the third floor balcony of her Los Angeles home. In this photo obtained by Inside Edition, Dr. Harwick is seen out with girlfriends last Friday, celebrating Galentine's at a burlesque show. One friend tells Inside Edition that she received a message at 1.05 a.m. from the therapist asking her to text the photo as a keepsake. Ten minutes later, she was pushed off the balcony at her home in the Hollywood Hills. 
In these court papers, filed by Dr. Harwick for restraining orders, she claims a long history of violence at the hands of Gareth Pursehouse. In 2011, she alleged Pursehouse choked me, suffocated me, pushed me against walls, kicked me, slammed my head into the ground. In 2012, she accused him of physically pulling me out of car. I got a bloody nose from his roughness. The most recent restraining order expired two weeks ago. Jealousy can become dangerous. Domestic violence counselor Tunisia Ofray. For whatever reason, this this perpetrator looks at this victim as their property, and meaning you're never going to get away from me. And that's the mindset of a lot of perpetrators. So Yang tells us a new analysis by the Washington Post finds domestic violence plays an even larger role in the deaths of far too many women. The numbers are staggering. Nearly half, 46 percent, of more than 4,400 women killed in the past decade died at the hands of an intimate partner. Judy, Post reporters analyzed data from 47 major U.S. cities. And in a closer examination of homicides in five of those cities, the reporters found that more than a third of the men implicated in a domestic killing were known to be potential threats. They had a previous restraining order against them or had been convicted of a domestic abuse or of a violent crime, including murder. And police told the Post reporters that attempted strangulation is a strong indicator that an abusive relationship could turn Jerry's deadly. ex fiance sex therapist Amy Harwick, is free on $2 million bail. Gareth Pursehouse walked out of L.A.'s Men's Central Jail last night. His release, just three days after he was accused of throwing Drew Carey's ex-fiance off her third floor balcony, is shocking a lot of her friends. When Pursehouse made bail, I was extremely angry. Robert Koshland was one of Dr. Harwick's best friends. She was afraid of him. I mean, she thought that he was extremely obsessed with her. She shared her phone location with me all the time and said, if anything ever happens to me, this is the guy. Now a sick joke posted nine months ago by the suspect on Instagram about throwing someone out of a window appears particularly foreboding. Okay, Game of Thrones, first season, the brother and sister are up in the castle and the brother has to go and throw the kid off and to, to kill him. And even though it's evil, I feel kind of bad for the brother. Talk about the release of Gareth Pursehouse a man accused of murder, and he walks free on bail. My reaction is outrage, but... I had a huge heart. Um, I, a couple of times, I was suicidal, and Amy helped me out with those things, um, walked me through, was there for me. Um, she was never a judgmental person to anybody at all. <laughs> Danielle Zimmer got emotional remembering her friend Amy. She told me she would always be there for me, and she didn't judge me. She didn't care that I was overweight or that I didn't look like everybody else. Um, and she just, she took to everybody in school. Danielle says their relationship continued after Amy moved to Los Angeles. I reached out to her and she said, if you ever come out on the West Coast, I'm always here for you. She was an inspiration to a lot of us and I pray for her and I pray for her family at this time because she did not deserve this. Another of Amy's high school friends was Christina Tornetta, who she first met at age 14. The pair shared a love of music. One of my favorite memories, I would say, was when we were at a concert together and she was crowd surfing and I thought it was the funniest thing because you couldn't see her because she was so little but you could see her glitter blue Doc Martens through the crowd being pushed to the front of the stage. And that's how we would know where she was and go get her. We were just wild girls, you know, running around doing our thing, getting in trouble, flirting with boys, trying to be cool. <laughs> and she was so pretty, you know, ev like everybody, everybody flocked to Amy. 